If you have a high first round pick in your dynasty rookie drafts, this is the place to be. Today, we're going to be breaking down everything you guys need to know. Rookie draft strategy, the ultimate strategy guide for picks 101, 102, 103, and 104 from a super flex and a one quarterback frame of mind. You can see it along the scroll bar and the timestamps. We're going to go over who we have ranked there, so who we would pick. We're going to go over trade down scenarios, trade up scenarios, if you want to trade those picks for veterans. Basically, if you hold these picks, you should absolutely watch this video all the way through. So let's get into it. All right, and a lot of people are going to be sharing, you know, their top 24 rankings or quarterback rankings, running back, receiver, tight end rankings, and show you where they have their players listed in this rookie class. But more importantly, it's about understanding where the tier breaks are, plan of action at each pick. And I really do believe like this macro strategy that we're going to provide you today and throughout this week when we go into the 105, 108, 109, 112 is the most important factor in your rookie drafts. Again, a lot of people are going to know who to stick and pick. But knowing how to maneuver the pick, knowing your opportunity bundles, knowing what you can get on the market with each pick is going to prepare you for ultimately when you're on the clock, bullets are flying, which ones can stick? Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody's going to have a different roster. Some contenders are going to have the 101. Some full-fledged orphan teams are going to have the 101. Some slight rebuilders are going to have the 101. So knowing the strategy and what course of action to take is absolutely what we want to do here. So as we talked about in the intro, the structure of this video will be who we have ranked there, trade down strategy, trade up strategy, and then trade for veteran strategy. And we're going to segment 101 and 102 together because Caleb and Marvin Harrison and Superflex are very similar in value. And then 103 through 105, even Caleb or uh, Drake May, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Daniels, very similar in value. So let's start with from 101 to 104, who would we actually take if we stuck and picked at that pick? For us both, it is synonymous. It's the same exact ranking. Caleb Williams at 101, Marvin Harrison at 102, Drake May at 103. Again, there's a tier break after those first two guys. Malik Neighbors at 104, and then Jaden Daniels at 105. The reason that 103 to 105 is a tier break, it's because I wouldn't really bat an eye if anybody said I would take Jaden Daniels at 103, or I would take Malik Neighbors at 103. I would take Drake May at 105. Like, we have Drake May at 103, but that is all a synonymous tier. It doesn't really matter. So those, if you guys are sticking and picking and you pick 103 and you need a wide receiver, you can take Malik Neighbors. If you're sticking and picking and you need a quarterback at 104, you can take Jaden Daniels or Drake May, whichever one you prefer. We prefer Drake May. But again, that's our rankings here. That's the simple part of this video. Your strategy at 101 to 104 is who do you pick? This is the answer right here for us. Yeah, and the way I kind of view it, and uh, we kind of have it in our rankings right now, is Caleb and Marv are your prototypical like one-two turn. Caleb a little bit higher, more so in that top ten area of your startup superflex drafts. We talk about this one hundred three to one hundred five range as kind of just like the second tier, if not early third of your startups, where all these names Drake May, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Daniels. If you're in a sharper room, will be gone by like the twenty fifth to thirtieth pick in your startup. So that's why I kind of view it. I personally can't go and take my one hundred three Drake May over Marvin Harrison Jr. over Caleb Williams. But if somebody said they can take my one hundred five Jaden Daniels over Drake May, I would at least understand it. Yeah, absolutely. So again, that was the easy part. Who do we actually have ranked there? Let's say we're going to start with 101 to 102 because they're the tier one within this one uh, picks 101 to 104. If you don't want to stick and pick for whatever reason, you don't want Caleb Williams, you don't want Marvin Harrison Jr. Or, you know, for whatever reason, you just want to do your due diligence as we talk about all the time. You want to see what can I get in a trade down? Or maybe you're further down the board and you're wondering how much you'd have to pay to trade up to get these guys or you want to sell these guys straight up for a veteran because you're a competitive roster and you lucked into the 102 because you traded some guy last year and you fleeced him for his 102 in the 2024 class. Let's start with trade down scenarios. And I would say if you're trading down from 101 to 102, the reason you're doing it is because your team sucks and you have the 101, 102 because you tanked the 2023 season and you're looking at your roster and yeah, it would be nice to add Caleb Williams. It's the player that you tanked for. It'd be nice to add Marvin Harrison Jr., but you have a bad roster and you need a lot of needle moving assets at wide receiver, at running back, at tight end. Maybe you need two or three quarterbacks still and you're in a full status teardown. So with these type of picks, what you're looking to get is a lot of good assets. Don't sell the 101 or the 102 for the 109 and three thirds. Like you want decent needle moving assets. So one of the moves that I actually made, because I found one of my teams in this situation where I didn't really have any quarterbacks on this roster. I'd been competing for three years prior to last year. So I tore it down trying to rebuild this thing proactively. 
I got the 102 this year. I tanked the 2023 season, didn't quite get the 101, but I did get the 102. And I sold the 102, which became Marvin Harrison Jr. for 106, which became Romo Dunze, who I took there. Uh, Nico Collins, who's currently valued as a top 20 dynasty wide receiver for me. And the 208, Troy Franklin, an option that I believe is a very strong one uh, in the mid to late second round there. So I basically turned one stud receiver into two very good receivers. Odunze, potentially, you could even make the argument, is closer to Marvin than people think. And I got Nico Collins on top of it, a top 20 receiver. And Troy Franklin, I believe, can turn into a wide receiver five, wide receiver six for my roster in the long term. So that's kind of the type of move framework that you'd want to get. If you're moving down from 102, try and secure a pick in that 103 to 107 range. Get a solid veteran if you want to get a veteran or another late first round caliber asset and then a second rounder on top of it. The other way to approach it then would be seeing if you can use your pick to get multiple picks in this honeypot. And when I say honeypot, I'm more so specifically saying the top five. And I understand everybody's top five maybe look different across the board. Some people may have Roma Dunze in there. Some people may have J.J. McCarthy in there. For my personal rankings, I view the top five as being a little bit of a tier above. And then there's a slight tier once you get to Rome and once you get to J.J. McCarthy. So this is actually a trade that I made in my home league where I had the 101. I have Anthony Richardson, no other quarterback, so I can definitely use Caleb Williams. But for me personally, I view 103 Drake May much ahead of the market. I view Drake May as a top 15 level super flex asset. And I do view the value jump from 106 to 102, aka Rome slash JJ to Marv, as being much bigger for me than the drop from Caleb Williams to Drake May. So what I end up doing, I trade away the 101 and the 106, which, like I said, Caleb Williams at the 101, 106, he may end up taking JJ, he may end up taking Roma Dudes for the stack. Who knows what he do, uh, does, but I am able to acquire here Marvin Harrison Jr. at the 102, Drake May at the 103. And, and for me personally, the way I view it is, like I said, Caleb Williams kind of a top 8 to 10 starter pick. Marvin Harrison is a 1-2 turn. And I view the value bump of Drake May, who I have in my top 15, as being higher than JJ slash Rum, who I have at the back end of my third round. Yeah, exactly. That difference between that 106 and Marvin Harrison is obviously the difference that you needed to make that trade. And then maybe you guys don't want to make a deal like that. Like you said, it's kind of a very team specific yeah. deal that you made. Maybe you just want to sell because this is a long-term orphan that you took over. You're thinking way, way into the future and you want to sell the rookie 101 this year because you got Caleb Williams. You tanked for it. You get the 104. You still secure yourself a Jaden Daniels, a Drake May, maybe a Malik Neighbors, and you get a projected early to mid first in 2025. Or maybe you get a 2020 six first and second, or you get a 25 first and a 26 first, whatever you're looking to do, what your goal is at that point would be to stack up future assets, stack up first round liquidity. The main point of trading down from 101 to 102 is you'd only actually be looking to do this if an offer blows you away. If your team is in shambles and you need a lot of things, you need a lot of swings at the bat. Otherwise, you're probably better off just taking Caleb Williams or Marvin Harrison Jr. We just said they're top 15 startup picks for a reason. So again, you're only doing your due diligence. You're seeing the offer that is out there. You're not necessarily just doing an offer to do an offer because if you're a rebuilding team and you need stud assets, Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison are stud assets. The only reason you'd be looking to trade down is if an offer presents itself where you can get a bunch of good assets or a bunch of great assets potentially for that 101 or for that 102. And for me, I felt like trading down, getting Nico Collins, the uh, Romo Dunze pick at 106, as well as the 208 Troy Franklin. To me, that was a good way of replenishing my wide receiver core that only Marvin Harrison couldn't replenish the depth of my wide receiver core. That's why we say due diligence and not overacting or rushing it. You want to do your due diligence. You want to see what's available on the market. And if it's an appropriate offer, if it's one that fits your team, fits what you're structurally trying to do for your team, whether you're rebuilding, whether you're contending, we'll talk about some veteran trade scenarios. You want to make sure that the trade offer you make makes sense from a value standpoint but also make sense from your team standpoint. You're not just selling the pick to sell it. You're not just selling the pick because you want to get a little bit active. You want to you know, spice up the league. You're doing it because you can see it bettering your team in the future. Because at the end of the day, man, it's got to be a good alternative if you're passing on Caleb or Marv. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And some people might argue that I lost that trade. Some people should have maybe say well, you should have just taken Marvin Harrison Jr. You shouldn't have traded down for Nico Collins and 106. And again, this is not a Dynasty Decisions episode, but to me, I felt like it made my team better in the long term, which is why I made that move. So let's say you don't pick at 101, you don't pick at 102, and you want to get up there because you have, you know, a, you got a 
laser focus. I want Caleb Williams on my team. I want Marvin Harrison on my team. Maybe you're a contender or close to being a contender. And I cannot stress this enough. That should be the situation you are in. If you are trading up for these players, because if you're in the situation that we just outlined before, you're a productive struggle. You took over an orphan. Your team sucks. You should not be, say, taking Caleb Williams with your 101 and then with your 109, trying to trade up for Marvin Harrison also and sacrificing your future first and your future second and all that kind of stuff. That would be a huge, huge mistake, in my opinion. If you're trading up for one of these two guys, say you're picking at 105 and you want to go get one, or you're picking at 108 and you want to go get one, your team better be very close to competing, if not already competitive, to do that. The way I kind of view this is if you have a surplus of asset in assets and you want to consolidate, that's the type of situation where you're trading up. Because like we know, I just mentioned Caleb Williams is a top 10 overall ranked player for both of us. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a top 15 ranked overall player for both of us in our startup rankings. If you're doing the math and you're in a startup right now and you're trying to trade up to the 108, 109 or the 201, 202 for either of those assets, think of what that owner would ask for you in return. Can you mortgage those type of assets to be able to consolidate? If you, you know, in your startup acquired a bunch of picks and young players hit and you're in a good house money spot and you want to make a move, that's one thing. But if you're in a situation where let's just say you're picking at the 106 and your team is kind of, you know, middle of the road, not much assets in the future, I don't think you can afford that opportunity to go up and get 101 because guess what? If you do make that move and you give up, let's just say 106 to future first to be able to do that. You're leaving yourself in a tough buy. But if you're in a situation where you have these assets and like Patty does here, you can throw the 104, 110, 2025 20, second for Caleb Williams. Once you contextualize it out, 104, you know, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, 110. Let's just say that's a Brian Thomas Jr., maybe a Bo Nix, 2025 20, second. Like that's not a cheap price to pay up, man. Like you're going to have to mortgage some assets if you want to go up and make the move. So make sure you have them in the cupboard before you leverage them off. Yeah, and, and we don't know the situation that Patty's in right now. Maybe he already has two other firsts this year and two other ones and two twos next year. And like you yeah. said, the type of move that you're making when you go up and get a Caleb Williams or a Marvin Harrison Jr. in Superflex is a consolidation move. It would be the same as sending the 104, the 110, and a 2025 second for Justin Jefferson or for Jamar Chase yeah. or an asset that's going to better your starting lineup because you have the depth of assets to be able to make up for that loss. So speaking of Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and all these guys, the other thing that you could do with the 101 and with the 102 is sell them for a veteran. And it better be a good one because like we said, Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. are in both of our top 15 overall startup rankings. Actually, I believe in both of our top 13 overall yeah. startup rankings. So if you are selling pick 101 because you're, you lucked into that pick, it's not your pick, somebody else, you had their first rounder and it ended up being the 101. That guy probably left the league after that or whatever the case is. You could sell Caleb Williams right now for CeeDee Lamb because the guy who has CeeDee Lamb is trying to tear it down. He wants a young quarterback get off uh, of the wide receiver and you're a competitive team. That's the type of move that you could make. And I would say if you are a veteran team with competitive assets and you lucked into 101 or 102, definitely this time of year, it's rookie fever. Everybody wants these guys, Caleb Williams and Marvin, flashy, flashy names. You can probably buy low on Justin Jefferson. You could probably buy low on maybe even a veteran quarterback like a Joe Burrow or a Justin Herbert if you want to make that move, or even a Lamar Jackson or a Jalen Hurts potentially if you can get up to those guys. Or like you said, if you don't want to rely on Marvin Harrison Jr., if you have that 102, you want a veteran wide receiver that can come in right away, maybe you can get Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, or a Monroe St. Brown plus. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that is the caveat here. You're not just saying, hey, I have the 101. Let me go sell it for Christian McCaffrey plus. No, if you are selling it for a veteran, you need a needle moving veteran. And like I said, like it, it was top 15 that I referenced. Marvin Harrison Jr. is my 11th overall player. Caleb Williams is inside my top 10 overall players. Like, like you said, it has to be a CD Lamb. It has to be a Justin Jefferson. It has to be a Jamar Chase or like the minimum I would even go Dijon down to. Dijon plus. I don't, I wouldn't even do, I would have to need like a Monra plus to be honest. Cause even still like knowing the liquidity and knowing the overall ceiling that Caleb has at the quarterback position and Marv has at the wide receiver position. Like we could be talking about those guys being the number ones at their position going into 2025 startup. So I would need to feel good and feel like I got very, very good value to move off of them. Yeah, exactly. But if you're in a competitive roster, you have the 102, you already have seven elite wide receivers on your team or exactly. seven great wide receivers on your team, and you only have one good running back, 
or something, somebody's going to want to trade the 102 straight up for Bijan Robinson, Brees Hall, Jameer Gibbs. Like you just said, make sure you're getting a solid plus on top of that. If you can yeah. get Bijan Robinson and a random late projected 2025 first, that's one thing. But if all you're getting offered is Bijan and a third for Marvin Harrison Jr., you should probably hold the asset that you have there and trade for maybe a, a cheaper running back with one of your yeah. other wide receiver assets or something like that. Again, when we draft in rookie drafts, we talk about this all the time. We don't draft for need. We draft the best players available, and we figure the rest out later. It is May 1st as we're recording this right now. If you think you need a running back as a veteran competitive team, and you want to sell Marvin for a running back straight because you want to just feel good about your starting lineup, you got three and a half months before you actually have to set a lineup. You can draft Marvin now. He might gain a shit ton of value until the season starts, or hell, you have other assets on your team. You have other players. You can address your running back position or your tight end position or your quarterback position, whatever position you're lacking at at a later point in time so that was the trade down trade up trade for veteran scenarios with that first tier within this 101 to 104 range the 102 in the 101 of course those two assets very valuable and super flex now let's yeah. talk about the trade down trade up and trade for veteran scenarios with the 103 and 104 slash 105 also because Jaden daniels drake may and malik neighbors make up that tier for us if you're looking to trade down from 103 to 104 I believe the reason you'd be looking to do this is because maybe you view it as a flat tier 103 all the way potentially down to 106, 107. The reason you're trying to trade down is because you want to pick up some more liquidity to get a similarly ranked player. Maybe you love Odunze, but you can't take him this higher. Maybe you love JJ McCarthy's landing spot, but you can't take him this higher. Maybe you need a tight end and you can't take Brock Bowers this high. It, maybe it's relatively close in value for you, or it's a similar situation to 101 and 102 where you have the 103 because you couldn't tank hard enough, but your team sucks and you need a lot. And that's why you're trying to trade down from 103 as opposed to just sticking and picking Drake May, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Daniels. Plus, nobody ever wants to pick at the top of a tier usually. A hundred percent. And uh, I mean, we could see this next deal that is able to be made trading down from that 104 area. I understand majority of leagues trading down three spots going to be tough for you to get a first and a second. But let's just say in a more redraft centric room, 2026 20, picks are valued. That guy's like, you know what? I'm a contending team. My pick's going to be 112 in 2026 20, anyways, and I can't add that player for the next two years. Maybe you could do a deal like Alexander does here, trading that 104 for the 107, picking up that 2026 20, one and two. When you equate it out, let's just say the 104 that guy used to select Jaden Daniels, 107 you used to select, you know, Roma Dunze or JJ McCarthy. Let's say it's JJ McCarthy. From a from an opportunity cost standpoint, if you were to tell me that I had the choice between Jaden Daniels or JJ McCarthy plus a future one and two, I don't care what year, if that's 27, 2028, 20, 2029, 20, I'm taking the JJ McCarthy side because at the end of the day, as much as the market leans uh, Jaden Daniels, as much as I do believe Jaden Daniels at this point should be viewed as the tier below, above, if you were to tell me within two years that JJ McCarthy ended up being the better dynasty asset and you also bank a one and two, it's just a sound process move at the end of the day. If you can get the good offer in your inbox like this one, it's worth it's worth taking up on, in my opinion. Yeah, imagine if you traded down from 102 last year to 105 and you got C.J. Stroud a first and a second for Bryce Young or Anthony Richardson. Yeah. You'd be absolutely laughing right now. And not that J.J. McCarthy is going to turn into the next C.J. Stroud. It's just an example of insulating your trade down and picking up multiple assets that can secure you a way to win that trade in the long term. So that's a, kind of a trade down scenario from the 103 to 104. Again, yep. if you're trying to trade up into this range, the reason you're probably doing it is because you want a quarterback, May, Daniels, one of those guys, or you just want Malik Neighbors because he's an absolute stud and he's something that people are going to want to go after. You could make a move like this. And this is a, uh, a move that I made in the actual very same league that I made the Marvin Harrison trade in. So again, this is a league where I was barren at quarterback. I had Justin Fields and that's it at quarterback. So I trade down from Marvin pick. I end up picking up a number of assets, Romo Dunze obviously being one of them, Nico Collins being another. I need to rebuild this team. I need to get st quarterback value. I need to get guys, young quarterbacks on my roster. And I also need you know, volume of picks to be able to have multiple bites at the apple. But I noticed Jaden Daniels was falling. And Jaden Daniels, like we said, is valued for us at the 105. But I was able to move up and pay a very small price, in my opinion, to secure myself a franchise quarterback, a guy that we just talked about it going from JJ McCarthy to Jaden Daniels in the other move might have costed me a first and a second future value. I was able to get from probably JJ McCarthy where I was picking because I needed quarterbacks so bad I was probably going to take JJ at 107. And I get up to Jaden Daniels. All I had to do was slide down five picks in the second round. Again, maybe this move isn't possible in your league, but again, 
That's the example of trading up for a asset that's in that 103 to 105 range. And that's where I got uh, Jaden Daniels out of that. And that really, really helped my roster because now I have Jaden Daniels to be my long-term QB1. Yeah, 100%. And it's kind of funny because it's like, I'm assuming the majority of trade downs, if you're dealing with like the 107 uh, JJ McCarthy hypothetically versus the 104, 105 Jaden Daniels, it would kind of feel like the valuations like in between these two deals where I feel like you got a really good deal on yours. And in terms of the other deal, it was Alexander. He got an overpay for his, I would say. If you find like the middle ground there of let's just say it's the 202 plus 107 to move up to the 105, that's probably about the equitable cost. Because like I said, I do view it as a tier, but at the end of the day, if you told me JJ McCarthy ended up being better than uh, Jay Daniels in long haul, I wouldn't be surprised. So if it ended up being, let's just say 107 plus 202, JJ McCarthy kind of finds himself at that 3-4 turn, Jaden Daniels more so at that 2-3 turn. If you were to offer, let's just say the startup 312 plus your you know 202 this year in exchange for the 301, that's about what we're looking at for JJ versus Jaden. Yeah, and I literally only had to give up the difference between Keon Coleman and Adonai Mitchell. Like that was the difference that I gave up, which are probably very similarly valued assets. So I felt pretty good about that trade. Again, veterans, let's transition into that with the 103 and the 104. If you're looking to sell this pick for veterans straight, Again, maybe you lucked into this pick, 103, 104. You didn't have it. It wasn't your first round, or maybe you suffered a million injuries last year, and you're a competitive roster going to look to rebuild. The best option to go after, I would say, would be one of the stud running backs with the 103, 104, especially if your team is in need of a running back. You could probably get Bijan Gibbs or Brees Hall straight up for this pick, or maybe, you know, slight, uh, you know, this pick plus a third gets you one of those guys, whatever, if you're in a running back heavy room. Uh, you could also just go after, if you don't believe in Drake May uh, or Jaden Daniels, which is very possible, you could go after Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray, Anthony Richardson, potentially. You could go after any one of those quarterbacks, or maybe you just want, you don't believe in Malik Neighbors, you don't like the New York Giants landing spot. Maybe you want to sell this pick for Garrett Wilson, or you want to sell this pick for Puka Nakua or for AJ Brown, probably, you know, I'd need a little bit more on top of that, but somebody like that. That's the type of veteran I would be looking to go after. We do have a trade here from Alexander where he ended up basically selling the 103 for Trevor Lawrence with some other fluff involved in the trade. I know you probably don't value this trade personally, but I actually do still prefer Trevor Lawrence to Drake May, who is currently my 103. So I actually do like this move if Alexander is in a place where Drake May is not going to help his team as much as Trevor Lawrence would in year one. And if he's in a competitive window, I really do like the idea of getting just Trevor Lawrence there. And to be honest, I mean, Drake May's calm for me was Trevor Lawrence. I literally view their value ceiling as quite similar. So even though Trevor Lawrence is a little bit more risky because he's had some value downtick in recent years, I still value the Trevor Lawrence versus the versus the 103 for me. The pivot I would make would be like if you if you had substituted Lawrence with like uh you know Kyler Murray, Anthony Richardson, Jordan Love or maybe you have to add a little piece uh, it can get you to like Herbert or Burrow. Like I would be more likely to do that versus Trevor right up. Cause I do have, again, I believe in Trevor Lawrence. It's just, I do feel like the same type of concerns type of exist there. Only you're dealing with a 21 year old quarterback versus one that's 25 at this point. Yeah. I mean, I look at Trevor, if Trevor Lawrence, if Drake may had walked into a situation with Trevor Lawrence's supporting cast, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. That's why I look at sure. the Trevor Lawrence side as, as again, yeah, he's a little bit older than Drake may, but it's not a big difference when you speak yeah. relative to the quarterback position who played for a very long time. Well, so I agree. Now, yeah, exactly. So that was the super flex portion of this video. We talked about trade up, trade down, trade for veteran, as well as just who we would actually pick. Again, the main point I want to hammer home here is 101, 102, 103, and 104 are extremely valuable picks this year. If you don't want to trade down or you don't you don't have the assets to trade up for these guys, you don't want to trade them for a veteran, that's fine. Take Caleb Williams, take Marvin Harrison Jr., take Drake May, take Malik Neighbors, or if you prefer, take Jaden Daniels there. So those guys are very valuable assets, but because they're very valuable assets, that's why we want to be doing our due diligence and seeing what they're worth on the open market. So let's transition this conversation into single quarterback because obviously it changes completely. We have different players. We're not talking about any quarterbacks at this point in the draft. Who do we have ranked in single quarterback 101 through 104? Again, it's the same-ish players. Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, slight tier break maybe, even potentially after Marvin 
uh, as a slight tier break, Romo Dunze at three, and then some combination of Brock Bowers and wide receiver four for you. For me, wide receiver four is Xavier Worthy. For you, Brian Thomas Jr. is wide receiver four. Depending on your roster's needs, if you already had Sam Laporta and you picked 104, I would be okay taking Xavier Worthy straight over Brock Bowers. Or if you needed a tight end, obviously you could just take Brock Bowers there. Yeah, the issue I have, especially in one quarterback leagues with just not taking Bowers at the more four, and we'll get into the options there, is that in a one quarterback league, we're probably more so looking at, you know, start seven, start eight, start nine leagues, where I think positional advantage means even more in those type of formats. So for me personally, I'm more likely to pass on Bowers for a receiver in my super flex start 12, 13 league than I am to pass on Brock Bowers for a receiver in my one quarterback start seven or eight. Cause I really do feel like Brock Bowers, if he can end up being the tight end one, which again, Sam Laporta is the guy right now, but if Brock Bowers has a comparable season to what Sam Laporta had this year, which yeah, you know, Ben Johnson, Jared Goff definitely had their play there, but Brock Bowers, the type of talent I think can have a very, very productive year. You're kind of getting that same type of valuation, but a year younger. So um, I, I, I personally would have Bowers there, but we can just get into the actual situations where if you're holding these picks, we'll start off with the 101, 102. If you're looking to trade down, let's just say you're able to, you know, tank for Marvin Harrison Jr. You're able to tank for Malik Neighbors. It's your one quarterback dynasty league. You have to recognize that in order to trade off of them, we should be looking for first round equivalent startup value because at the end of the day, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a top five overall startup pick in one quarterback leagues. Malik Neighbors is going to be a top 12 overall pick, if not even a top 10 to eight overall guy. So if you're selling these players, you're not just selling them for spare parts. You're selling them what you would sell a first round pick in a startup for. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's the really underrated thing with rookie drafts is that people look at it. Oh, I'm only moving down two spots in the rookie draft, 102 to 104. It's like, in equivalent startup value, that's the difference between, like you said, a late first round pick where Malik Neighbors is going to go. Brock Bowers, even if you're really, really high on him, is probably an early third rounder, right? Like that's a pretty big value drop off. And if you're yeah. not high on him, that's even potentially a mid to late third or an early fourth rounder. So again, when you're selling these picks, the Marvin and Malik Neighbors to me represent a bit of a tear break because they're going to be first round startup value assets. You should look for something like what Tim ended up trading to the guy here. So Tim basically outlines this trade where he sold 103 and Jonathan Taylor. So essentially Romo Dunze and Jonathan Taylor for Marvin Harrison Jr. From his perspective, I understand why he did it. He was the reigning champion. Uh, he has a stack roster and he has a lot of draft capital. That's fine. But from the other guy's perspective is what I'm interested in, in a trade down scenario. If you were a hoping to be competitive team, house money team type of uh, roster, and you lucked into the 101, and somebody offered me Odunze and Jonathan Taylor in a one quarterback league, in a start eight, no less, too, where your starting lineup matters a lot. Jonathan Taylor is going to be a starting running back, no matter what your running back look uh, core looks like. 103 is going to be a great asset. Romo Odunze, probably a mid to late second round startup pick. That is a great return in terms of what the guy that Tim traded with received in order to move off of that 101. So when you're trying to trade down from these picks, like you said, you better, if you're doing a two for one, it better be two really good assets. Yeah, absolutely. And I, again, I understand this from both perspectives. So I actually made a trade for Justin Jefferson on the side where I basically made a similar deal to Tim, where I gave up, you know, players, assets. At the end of the day, when you're top contenders in some leagues, especially when it comes to, you know, start 10 or less, start nine type of league, start eight leagues in Tim's example, contending teams are going to have to offer a ton if you're going to move off these picks. And that's the common concept I want to bring home here is that in a one quarterback league, typically you want to see bigger overpays than you would in a super flex. Cause typically speaking in your one quarterback leagues, they're much more shallow start seven, start eight, start nine. Once you get into super flex leagues, you're more so looking in the majority of leagues being start 10 or higher 11, 12, 13 in some cases where if you're contextualizing in a one quarterback league and you understand just how valuable the starting lineup is, knowing that everybody's going to have depth, you're going to see some big time uh, offers. So for Tim, I understand that he's trying to consolidate. He takes his, you know, older running back asset plus his Roma Dunze upgrades to Marvin Harrison. And I also understand, like you said, from the other person's perspective, maybe he doesn't have a starting caliber running back or maybe he has Marv, but he really needs to build some assets around the team. You get Jonathan Taylor, you get Roma Dunze, who, while I'd be hard pressed to see he can eventually be more valuable than Marv, if he has a good rookie season, he's tethered to Caleb Williams for the long term. He could very easily be, if not in the same tier, at least in the similar area to where we view Malik Neighbors at this point. 
Yeah, like if if he's Garrett Wilson to CeeDee Lamb, like I don't think yeah. any of us would be mad about that if you're selling off of Marvin Harrison Jr. and getting Romo Dunze in return. So again, if you're selling off of these picks, you really, really need a lot in return. We're just going to keep hammering that point home, especially in one quarterback leagues. If you're in a start seven, a start eight, really shallow starting rosters. Like that 101 is a top five startup pick, top four startup pick. And you'd have to pry it from my gold, uh, my cold dead hands, man. Like Marvin Harrison is that valuable yeah. in a shallow one quarterback league. I guess in one quarterback leagues, Marvin is even more valuable than he would be in super flex because you don't have all those quarterbacks to compete exactly. with in terms of startup value. So uh, number two, trade up scenarios for the 101 and 102. So we're still talking Marvin and Malik here. Consolidation. The reason you're probably trying to do this is like we just talked about with Tim, he was trading 103 Romo Dunze plus Jonathan Taylor to go get a consolidated asset in Marvin Harrison Jr. at 101. But this is also a great example. I mean, somebody that needs depth, again, in a start eight, one quarterback league, you shouldn't be making depth trades. You should care about what your starting lineup looks like. Tim, again, we're using him as an example. He was able to sell Kyron Williams and Zay Flowers for the 102 Malik Neighbors. So again, first round startup asset, Malik Neighbors. He sold Zay Flowers, who's what, a third round startup pick at best if you're really high on him, and Kyron Williams, who's like a fourth round startup pick probably at best if you're really high on him. And you got basically what, 111, 112 in startups right now? Yeah, absolutely. And then a start eight, nonetheless, like I said earlier, Kyron Williams, you know, mid to back end range RB1 in Dynasty. Zay Flowers, you know, if you're high on him, he's probably a late wide receiver two, but in most rooms, possibly an early wide receiver three. 102 Malik Neighbors is going to instantly be a top eight to 10 valued wide receiver on the market. And like you said, it's probably going to end up being the 110, 111 in your startup. Again, when you're trading up for these assets, if you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to do it in one quarterback formats, then definitely explore those options. And if you're trading down, you better get an arm and a leg to do it because they are extremely valuable. Which veterans we would sell the pick for? I mean, it's three names uh, at 101. Like if you're if you're selling 101 in a one quarterback league, you better get Chase Jefferson or Lamb. Those are the only three players that are more valuable in our opinion than Marvin Harrison Jr. If you need more depth and you sold Marvin plus or you sold Marvin for a Monra plus, or you sold Marvin because you need a running back for Bijan Gibbs or, or uh, Brees Hall plus. Again, it better be a solid plus because in one quarterback leagues, you know, selling Marvin Harrison Jr. for the 208 and Bijan Robinson is not enough. You need the 111 in a one quarterback draft. You At need least. a future first in the quarter in a one quarterback league. That's what you want, even though it's a liter- it's literally a one spot discrepancy in my overall startup rankings. Yeah, for sure. But you you need that type of value. You need that type of juice. Like, I'm not just doing it for a two because I understand, like, you make the case value-wise. Oh, if B. John Robinson at running back. Oh, Brees Saul at running back. Oh, you know, Jameer Gibbs at running back. It's like, well, we have to understand that the ceiling range of outcome does exist on those assets too. The ceiling range of outcome of those running backs is maybe a mid-range, you know, first round pick in a startup. The ceiling range for Mar- Marvin Harrison is next year's 101. Would you sell the 101 in a startup for anything less than the 106 plus a future first and a one quarterback league start eight? It probably wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. So again, veterans to sell the pick for. If you're selling Marvin, it better be something elite. And same with Malik too. I mean, we have him, what, yeah. 112? I have him 112. You have him 111 in a startup. You better get Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs for him. You better get Garrett Wilson for him. You better get Puka Nakua for him. You better get up to one of those top three receivers or a Monra or Harrison or something like that. If you're selling Malik neighbors right now for Chris Olave, like I'm telling you, you're doing it wrong. Like you need yeah. something more than that. You need something better than that. Even if you're taking the risk on the rookie, just then be fine taking the risk on the rookie, because I'm telling you right now, Malik neighbors is not a very big risk to take because he projects that well. So let's transition into these one quarterback, one Oh three to one Oh four. So now we're talking about Romo Dunze is our consensus between the two of us. One Oh three, one Oh four is mainly Brock Bowers 90% of the time. But for me, I would see circumstances where you could potentially take whoever your wide receiver four is over Brock Bowers. For me, that's Xavier Worthy. For you, that's Brian Thomas. Some people might really love Ladd McConkey. For me, I would be taking um, Worthy straight up over Bowers most of the time, depending on my tight end core, depending on my wide receiver core and that type of thing. But in shallow leagues, one quarterback leagues, any kind of tight end premium, Bowers is definitely going to most likely be the 104 in most of those leagues. Yeah, and the context here, like I mentioned with Marvin Malik, where you're if you're trading them, you need first round equivalent startup value in a one quarterback league. The startup equivalent you would need for Rome and Bowers, in co- according to our rankings, would be for Rome, roughly a late second, mid second type of round pick. 
Brock Bowers, more so a third round type of value. So keep that in mind. We're not thinking about the pick numbers because you might see, oh, 101 versus 103 doesn't look very different in my rankings. Well, in a one quarterback league, that's the difference between a first round startup versus a mid to late back end second. Yeah, not to mention in the actual rookie draft, if somebody's offering you the 107 plus two twos to get to 103, you might be like, oh, it's only a four pick drop off. But like 107 in a one quarterback league versus Romo Dunze might be a three to four round startup pick drop off. Yeah, a hundred percent. The one thing you got to take away from this video from a macro standpoint is when you're looking at these trades, do not be fooled by the pick numbers. Do not be fooled by the 106 or the 109. You have to think it in the context of players and you have to think it in the context of opportunity costs because as soon as you can equate these players to values and understand it from a startup context, it's going to give you a better understanding for how to make trades and how to value certain assets. Yeah, and of course, if you do need help valuing certain assets and making trades, we have our Dynasty Trade Value Chart now live on the site, flockfantasy.com. We've been showing off some of the features of it in this video. Use the promo code FSE for 30% off, seven-day free trial. And we have a Dynasty Trade Calculator. So if you have an offer on the table that's the rookie 103 in your one quarterback draft for 107 and two seconds, plug it right into the trade calculator, and I guarantee you it'll spit out that you're getting fleeced on that trade. So definitely make use of those um uh, resources, even if you're just signing up for your seven day free trial, you can make use of that trade calculator right away. So, um, let's talk about the trade down scenarios, right? We're not talking about Malik neighbors or Marvin Harrison jr. Here at one Oh three and at one Oh four. But like you said, Romo Dunze and Brock Bowers are a second round startup asset and probably a third round startup asset, especially in any kind of tight end premium format. The trade equivalent to move down from Romo Dunze would be very, very high still. Like if you're moving down from 103 to 106, you're going to need a first rounder of liquidity in terms of a rookie pick value. Yeah, 100%. And the prime example here would be, let's say you have the 103 in your league and you know you need multiple assets. Guess what? To move down to the 106, the 107, it's probably going to be at least the equivalent of a late first round pick. If not, a solid quality player, to be honest. Like we're, we're not just trading the pick to trade it. We have to understand the context there that although at 107, we like maybe, you know, getting uh, Xavier Jonathan Worthy, Brooks, Lad McConkie, Xavier Wor- Jonathan Brooks. There's a difference between them and Rome. Yeah, absolutely. So if you, if let me propose a trade idea to you. I'm at the 107. I offer you, I will offer you my 107, which you'll take Brian Thomas Jr. with, or you'll take yeah. Lad McConkey with. And I offer you my first rounder in 2025. It's projected to be really late. I'm a top three team in the league. I probably counter back looking for at least a two on it, knowing the context you're going to be in the semifinal to the final. I would at least need that as the offer in order for me to even send a counter. Like if they're coming at you as a top contender and they're saying, yeah, you know, it's only three picks. I'm going to offer you my 2025 projected 210 to 212. I'm hanging up the phone and I'm not answering back. Yeah, or they offer you like the 207 in this year's class or something. And it was like, oh, I'm giving you the 207 just for you to move down four spots or whatever. Like, again, keep in mind startup value. Use our trade calculator if you need to. Let's talk about trade up scenarios because kind of as we talked about with the super flex thing, I'm much more likely in a super flex league to trade down from 103, 104 because of the quarterback equity there. There's more valuable yeah. picks from 106, 107, 108. But in, in one quarterback leagues, like you got to pry that pick from my cold dead hands because Odunze and Bowers are highly valued assets. And there's not as many of those guys later down the board. Alternatively, if you are picking 106, 107, and all it costs you to go get Romo Dunze, or all it costs you to go get Brock Bowers, if you need a, a solid tight end, is the 107, your 2025 second, which projects to be late, and some random upside receiver you don't really care about, like Khalil Marvin Shakir, Mims. and absolutely go do it. Yeah, absolutely. Khalil Shakir, Marvin Mims, Quentin Johnson. You have these roster cloggers on your roster that some people may have interest in. Throw it as a part of the deal. People might just say, oh, like that plus the second I don't like. But the minute they see, you know, one of these random names, sometimes they're more likely to take it. I don't know. Who knows? Like it's more valuable to other people's teams than it is on ours at the end of the day. That's one thing you got to learn from FSC is that roster cloggers are better used as part of, you know, little, little, little gimmicks, little added pieces rather than, you know, just holding them thinking that they're going to turn into something, but even though it's been three years. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But we would be okay, like we talked about already, with selling the 108, hypothetically, and your 2025 first to go up and get Romo Dunze. 
We'd be yeah. okay with doing that, especially in a start eight, one quarterback startup or a rookie draft. You're not really focused on depth at that point in time. And especially if you're making that move, you better be a top contender. And that first better be projecting to be at least 109 or later in a standard 12 team league there. So those are the types of moves we'd be talking about. Bull Scat actually tweeted this one at us. He was trying to sell off his competitive assets and somebody offered him the 104 and a third for Josh Jacobs, Tyler Algier. And he just had to get that $1 of fab in there for some reason. But yeah, if somebody's going to give you Josh, or if somebody's going to want Josh Jacobs off of your roster and give you Brock Bowers or wide receiver four for you in return for that, again, it, this tells me that this is a very redraft centric market yeah. and this guy doesn't know how to value picks. Yeah, 100%. Like, let's just say you're, you, most of you aren't going to be able to get the 104 from this straight up. If this was the 108, I would say the same thing. And we'll get into the 108 video in a bit, but obviously with the context of the 104, like we're taking the 104 Brock Bowers over Josh Jacobs, but what running back would you say that would need to be in order to equate it to fair? It would probably need to be, it would be, it need to be Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor would probably be the right too. running back name to throw in there. So if that said Jonathan Taylor, Algier and the $1 five for the 104 and the third round pick, if you're a rebuilding team, like, yeah, you love Jonathan Taylor, but Brock Bowers is going to be a top three value tight end the moment that he enters your team. And Brock Bowers is, what, 21 years old versus Jonathan Taylor being 25? You have to think it from a process standpoint. You take the young tight end. Yeah, exactly. So let's move on to which veterans we would sell the 103 and 104 for. Again, you can see where Romo Dunze stacks up relative to the veterans in our one quarterback startup rankings on flockfantasy.com. Yeah. Brandon Ayuk, Patrick Mahomes, if you need a quarterback, CJ Stroud, if you need a quarterback, Chris Olave, if you need another wide receiver, uh, Tyreek Hill, if you're a competitive team who locked into the 103 and you just absolutely want to go win your championship, Tyreek makes sense. Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, again, I'd probably need a plus on top of those guys to go after uh, and move off of Odunze. But like you said, we have Odunze ranked inside of our top 24 rankings. You have them even yeah. inside the top 20 overall rankings. So. Yeah. This is a highly, highly valued asset that we don't want to move off of unless we're getting a real needer mover. If you're a competitive team, go get Christian McCaffrey, go get Tyreek Hill, or if you want an, another young receiver that's going to help you more in the short term, you know, Brandon Ayuk, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, somebody like that would make a lot of sense. And then at 104, as we talked about, there's a little bit of a value difference between us 103 having Odunze inside our top 20 to 24 overall players. Brock Bowers slash wide receiver four for me. That would be Xavier Worthy for you. That would be Brian Thomas Jr. More so third round startup assets, not necessarily the second round caliber guys. So if you're selling Brock Bowers or you're selling wide receiver four with that 104 pick, you better get Tank Dell, Nico Collins. If you need a quarterback, Lamar Jackson, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, Zay Flowers, somebody like that. And again, there'd be even cases I would hear to say you need plus on top of those guys for Brock Bowers or for yeah. wide receiver four in this class for you, because those young players, they can really accumulate value quickly. And, you know, Brock Bowers and say Xavier, where they could be easily mid second round startup picks by three weeks into their rookie season. Yeah. I think you pretty much outlined it. Well, if you're going to trade Bowers for a vet, make sure it's one that's valued within the top 36, the top 40 overall assets in, in your rankings. Cause if you're just trading it for Keenan Allen, plus a late pick, like that's not accomplishing anything for you. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you're a competitive team, you're like, no, you know what? I can sell my 103 for Mike Evans. It's no big deal. I need Mike Evans to help me win a championship. It's like, sure. If Mike help, Mike Evans helps you win a championship, you could say that trade was a success, but it's not a success knowing that you should have gotten Tyreek Hill. Uh, definitely uh, the types of moves that you want to learn from. But again, when you win the championship, you do have to sacrifice 10% of your value. You're not going to get perfect value on competitive yeah. assets during the season, especially championship week. Like we ended up making that trade, but again, it's all a balance of, okay, how much value am I okay giving up? So that's kind of what yeah. we come back to. So a lot of macro strategy in this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you made it all the way to the end, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new around here, if you've never checked this out before, I'm sure you guys learned something in this video. I promise you this was definitely valuable. So leave a subscribe down below. And also if you want our overall startup rankings, as you saw, we featured them throughout this video, one quarterback, super flex, dynasty trade value charts, use of our uh, use of our trade calculator, as well as a ton of other features, including our rookie prospect rankings, head on over to flockfantasy.com and use the promo code FSE when you sign up to get 30% off to get a seven day free trial. And right now we also have a special promotion going. If you are a new user to underdog fantasy, best ball mania five just opened up 
15 million in total prizes, 1.5 million to first place. If you want our rookie draft guide, as well as all of our all 22 film breakdowns to get you ready for your rookie drafts, you might have them coming up or they might be ongoing already. You can sign up on underdog fantasy right now using just a $10 deposit and you'll get that stuff for free within 24 hours sent to your inbox. So if that interests you, check that out down below in the link in the description and in the pinned comment. But with that being said, peace out and we'll talk to you soon.